YouTube monetization is something that every new YouTuber thinks about in the back of their mind when they start a YouTube channel. Getting paid for the content that you love creating is something that all of us here on the platform want to actually do. But the requirements to get monetized on YouTube and get paid for the ads that show up in your content require you to get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. Now in a previous video, we actually talked about exactly how to get your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you haven't watched that, it's gonna be linked in the description down below. Today, I wanna to focus on the 4,000 hours of watch time specifically and tell you exactly how to get 4,000 hours of watch time for your YouTube channel so that you can apply for monetization in the YouTube Partner Program. Now, I hope some of you like math because this video is actually gonna contain a lot of it. And I know that as a small YouTuber, you can feel that this is an impossible goal to reach without it taking forever, but it's actually something on a completely new and faceless YouTube channel that I've actually managed to do at the beginning of 2020 in terms of getting very close to that 4,000 hours of qualified watch time. The channel that I'm talking about right now is sitting at about 3,000 qualified hours of watch time for the YouTube Partner Program and 4,000 hours of watch time total. Something you absolutely need to know is that YouTube Shorts do not count towards your watch time total when it comes to qualifying for the YouTube Partner Program and getting monetized on YouTube. So in addition to the fact that you're probably not making money off of your YouTube Shorts anyway, they also won't help you qualify for the watch time to start making money on YouTube. So uh, YouTube Shorts, not really a lot of money in it, can help you grow your channel, can get you a ton of views, maybe even some subscribers, but if your goal is YouTube monetization, at least right now, it's not gonna help you. We'll also talk about YouTube live streams and whether that helps you with meeting the watch time requirements and a specific strategy for that. But let's focus on just YouTube channel uploads for now, since YouTube Shorts doesn't help us and YouTube live streams are something we need to dig a little bit more into. Now, in my previous video about getting your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, one of the things we focused on is something called the 1% rule. And here's just the short version of how this works. Typically, this is not 100% of the time, but typically, in order to get to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, you usually have to get about roughly 100,000 views on YouTube total in order to hit that milestone of 1,000 subscribers. And this is important because as we said, you need 1,000 subscribers to get into the YouTube Partner Program. You also need 4,000 hours of watch time and your account needs to be more than 30 days old. So those are your basic requirements before you can submit an application to the YouTube Partner Program, get monetization and start getting paid on YouTube. Now getting to 100,000 views is our primary target here because that's gonna give us the most opportunity in order to get subscribers and to accumulate watch time by people actually caring about and watching our videos and becoming invested in our channel. When you break down 4,000 hours of watch time, it becomes 240,000 minutes of watch time that you need. So almost a quarter million minutes of watch time, 240,000. This number is actually gonna be really helpful to us. Knowing that we have to get 100,000 views and then 240,000 minutes is something that sets us up with the perfect formula to actually get to monetization on YouTube. One of the most important metrics in YouTube analytics that you could be looking at at any given time is average view duration because this helps you realize that people are enjoying your content and lets you see on average how much of your content they're typically watching all the way through. Now, when we look at average view duration and we think about the fact that we're shooting for 240,000 minutes across 100,000 views, it tells us that we need an average view duration of usually between three to four minutes to absolutely be safe when it comes to meeting these watch time requirements if we can get enough views. And that's why I said that this video is exactly how to get 4,000 hours of watch time on YouTube because we are going to break down the math that you need to hit so that you know where the goal post actually is and you can come up with a plan. I understand that everybody makes different types of content on YouTube across different genres, whether it's tech, beauty, gaming, lifestyle, vlogs, all of it. 
but this at least helps most people understand what they need to do with their content strategy and the way that they're setting up their videos and the way that they're making their plans to move forward. Knowing that you have to hit three to four minutes of average view duration can help give you a guideline for how long you're going to end up making your videos while you're pursuing this goal. It's also gonna come in handy later, that uh, 240,000 minutes is gonna come in handy later when we talk about live streams and when we talk about StreamYard, but more on that later. There's a question that new YouTubers always ask, how long should my videos be on YouTube? And the typical answer is not a minute longer than they need to be. And that's actually true. However, if your goal specifically is to get monetized as quickly as possible, then I would recommend considering if your videos will fit you making videos that are between eight and 12 minutes long, and there's a couple of benefits to this. Number one, when your videos do eventually get monetized, you'll be able to go back and add uh, mid-roll and post-roll ads to your videos on YouTube. Anything over eight minutes is allowed to have mid-roll ads, which means you would make more money on that content. As long as you're not interrupting the viewer experience and it's not put in a very awkward place, I don't really see a problem with this as it means that you're getting more money for the effort that you put into your content. And as long as the viewers are okay with it, it's not gonna be a problem. So making videos between eight to 12 minutes makes sense for the long term anyway, even if you don't feel that your first videos are gonna be watched all that much in the future, then it still is worth pursuing just because you will get more mileage out of them. Also, this means if people are enjoying that content and it is evergreen content that people can keep coming back to and watching over and over, if it's part of a series or anything like that, this is also really helpful. The key thing here is that by having eight to 12 minute videos, we're more likely to get people to watch about 30 to 50% of them, which puts us in our margins to hit three to four minutes of average view duration from at least the majority of our viewers. And that is what's gonna help us achieve our 240,000 minutes of watch time, AKA our 4,000 hours. I told you this video is really for people who like math. And that's what's gonna make this work for you is this is a mathematical formula you can use to make an effective content strategy on YouTube that is going to lead to you getting those first 1,000 subscribers by getting 1% of those views, of those 100,000 views that we're shooting for to turn into subscribers who hopefully keep coming back and watching your videos. I do need to warn you that subscribers aren't always notified of the videos that you upload, whether they hit the notification bell or not. Some of you may have heard bigger YouTubers complain about this. Do not mistake the idea of having subscribers for the actual number of people you can reach with your YouTube content. It does not work that way, at least not since 2015. Changes are kind of the norm here on YouTube. Don't get comfortable or used to anything, ever. But that's okay, your favorite content creators have had to evolve through the same process. Maybe not always the same rules, the same goalpost, but the same shifting sand over and over of YouTube always being something new and fresh to challenge us. Now I know some of you are thinking, well Roberto, what about live streams? If I live stream for an hour, couldn't I get to that requirement faster since we're measuring this by 4,000 hours of watch time? What if I can get hundreds of people to watch my live streams? Well, that's a great tactic and it does give me an opportunity to talk about today's sponsor, StreamYard, since they are the simplest solution for live streaming on YouTube and pretty much any other platform. Some of you actually may tune into my free creator workshops on the weekends where I talk about the creator economy. I bring on guests and we talk about everything from how to get brand deals as a smaller influencer, uh, what it takes to be a full-time YouTuber, and we also break down things like YouTube analytics and dig into the back end of channels. Sometimes we even do channel reviews for people who are part of the community. And the way that I do that is with StreamYard. StreamYard allows me to actually simulcast across multiple platforms, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn Live, and even Twitter, all at once. 
and I can easily bring guests into my live streams without them ever having to download software. And so when I wanna do live streams and pad my watch time, and then I actually have a really great tool that helps me to do that, and StreamYard. And the best part is, you can sign up for StreamYard completely free and take advantage of most of the features without actually needing to pay a monthly fee. But if you do want to get all the features, they have affordable monthly plans. So thank you to StreamYard for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to getting you 4,000 hours of watch time. So like I was saying, live streams could be a great tool for you in terms of trying to get to those 4,000 hours of watch time. However, I don't recommend doing this until you are a little higher up on your subscriber goals. Maybe around 300 to 500 subscribers, this actually becomes a viable strategy. In my mind, your goal should be to try to get 100 people onto a live stream that's gonna be about one hour to 90 minutes. And the reason that I have for this is that that means you know that you're gonna get about 100 hours of watch time from one piece of content. And when we're looking at 4,000 hours of watch time, that may not sound like a lot, but let's think about it. If you manage to do 10 live streams, let's say you started doing a live stream once a week for the community that you're building. Let's say that you are on your way to those 1,000 subscribers and maybe you've started to build a community in Discord or you have people who follow you in other social media platforms and they would like to be part of a live experience or they invite friends or they share out your stream or maybe somebody that's larger in the community actually ends up plugging your stream or you have them on as a guest and then they're bringing their audience with them. Well, if you can get 100 people watching your live stream and they stay on for an hour, when that live stream goes public on your channel, you're gonna have 100 hours of watch time. If you manage to do this once a week and you were doing it for 10 weeks, that's 1,000 hours of watch time right there. That's one fourth of the goal that you have in terms of getting monetized as a small YouTuber and starting to earn from ad revenue. But not only that, you've started to build an audience that will want to support you and might donate in terms of super chats once you do get monetized. For those of you who don't know, part of the way the YouTube Partner Program works is that once you're monetized on YouTube, you get splits on ad revenue and that's a 55-45 split with you getting 55% as the content creator. But what you may not realize is that when you do live streams, people can donate directly to you through what are called super chats. And you actually keep 70% of that and YouTube only takes 30%. Again, you might feel iffy about that. Why is it they're taking 30%? But if you were on Twitch as a live streamer, they'd be taking 50%. So this is actually a fantastic deal when you look at it. And it's a great opportunity. By doing live streams with your community early on, as long as you can get a loyal viewership on those live streams, you're conditioning an audience that shows up for you specifically and is the most likely to want to support you, not just with their eyeballs, but with their wallets. So this could be extremely lucrative in the future to get your audience used to you doing live streams. Since you're trying to monetize, I assume that that's something that would be important to you. Remember, you also get channel memberships now at 1,000 subscribers, which means people could decide to support your content monthly and maybe decide to kick in $5 a month for your exclusive content or just for some perks that you give to the community or just to support you because they like your content. And once again, YouTube takes 30% of this and you, the creator, keep 70%. So this is something important, and I really hope nobody's skipping over this part, because it's something that people don't consider beyond ad revenue. Ad revenue is just one of the ways that you can monetize a YouTube channel. And it goes well beyond just getting super chats and memberships or even merchandise that you can sell directly to your audience on top of the ad revenue. There are so many ways to monetize YouTube and you don't have to wait until you're in the YouTube Partner Program. Something I talk about a lot on this channel since we talk about making money online as a content creator, we talk about the creator economy and the industry here, do not get caught up in the AdSense. It often ends up being about a tenth of a penny per view. But going back to this idea of live streams, I really think that this is an underestimated strategy, but I've told you how to do it the best way that I know how. Doing it when you know that you have an audience that will show up for you and knowing that you're not broadcasting to zero people. The other good thing about StreamYard with the multicasting is that 
Frankly, the live viewing experience on YouTube is superior to the other platforms. However, the notification system might be better on some other platforms for letting people know that you're live in the first place. So this is something you can use to your advantage. And that's why I think it's actually really powerful to do. I also think that by having other creators, maybe people in your niche that are just slightly bigger than you or even the same size, could be great because then you can pull your audiences and you can grow together. A high tide raises all ships. These people aren't your competitors, They're more like your comrades, or in theory, you could even think of them as your colleagues. 240,000 minutes of watch time is not impossible. It can be done and it can be done right now. It just isn't gonna happen overnight. Uh, like I said, the other channel that I've been using to test this idea and this data and break things down on is a music channel. It is a faceless music channel that doesn't really benefit that much from me being Roberto Blake. Uh, so what I've been doing over on the Zen Buster music channel is I've been using different formats, whether it's uh, music tracks that are just four minutes or hour long loops of those music tracks anything from uh, 10 hour extensions. And I've been able to see clearly that little by little, piece by piece, over the course of a couple of months, you absolutely can accumulate 4,000 hours of watch time. You just have to be strategic. Here's one thing I do wanna tell you when it comes to live streaming that nobody talks about. If you're doing a 24 hour live stream, a 24 seven live stream, since that never gets published and it doesn't really end, it goes on forever and ever and ever, it actually doesn't count toward the public watch time that you need in order to qualify for monetization, which is why my music channel has its 4,000 hours of watch time, but only 3,000 hours of it count currently. And so that's something you need to be aware of in the same way that YouTube Shorts don't count toward your watch time for monetization. It'll count toward the whole channel's cumulative watch time, but it won't count toward the qualified watch time for YouTube monetization. And I know that that can be confusing. So it's only videos that are public, not videos that are private, not videos that are unlisted, and not live streams that haven't ended. So if you're doing 24 seven live streams, that's not really a strategy to be able to accumulate the watch time you need. Maybe it gets you exposure, maybe it gets you subs, but it's not gonna help you on the 4,000 hours of watch time, not one bit. And of course, the same it goes for YouTube Shorts. Now, for those of you who are gonna ask in the comments, like the five of you, uh, yes, premieres do count toward the cumulative watch time once the premiere is over, as long as you make the video public. So as long as the video is public, it counts toward your watch time hours. It just can't be unlisted or private or still an ongoing stream. Also, videos you delete do not count toward your public watch time hours. That should be common sense, but I just wanted to cover it. So now I think I've covered everything you need to know in terms of exactly how to get 4,000 hours of watch time on YouTube so you qualify for YouTube monetization. Question of the day, how many of your views, what percentage of your views are coming from your subscribers versus your non-subscribers? Let us know in the comment section because that's actually gonna help people understand how YouTube actually works. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're checking out uh, this other video on how to get your first 1,000 subscribers if that's something you're struggling with. Also, feel free to watch my playlist on the best tips for new YouTubers. I think it'll help a lot of you. Both will be linked in the description down below. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.